welcome to my channel. Today's video is, I don't know, I actually want to talk about Audible and books and my favourite author. Yeah, that's it really. My Nana was an avid book reader. She passed it on to my mum, who passed it on to me. As I got a little bit older, I didn't really have that many books and I really fancied a book so my mum had quite a big collection. I looked at hers and picked a book. One of my mum's favourite authors is Dean Koontz, which happens to be my favourite authors purely because I've read quite a lot of his books. Some of the books are absolute gems. Like, I cannot remember what the first book of Dean Koontz I read. It was a long time ago. I really prefer reading books, you know, having a book. But due to being at work, I really don't have that much time to sit and read a book. So I have Audible, which is a godsend. It is amazing. It's great to read a book. Listen to a book. It's, it's great. So the Audible app is brilliant. I absolutely adore it. Monthly subscription fee, but you get one credit a month, which means you get to pick a book and you don't have to pay for it. There's a couple of Dean Koontz books that were very long, they were £20, but due to me having a credit, I got it for nothing. I mean, well, obviously the credit was basically your, your monthly fee, so it was like £6 something, but you can't complain about that. Amazing. Like I said, I can't remember the exact first book I read. Possibly been The Key to Midnight. Genuinely, I don't really remember much about that. I remember it being set in Japan, I think. A woman, a doctor, or somebody, a man coming out at night and injecting her and stuff. I think what I need to do is reread that. After that, the next books I read was the Frankenstein series. Oh my god, the first book I was utterly insane. Absolutely adored it. It was absolutely brilliant. Remember rightly, the second book was pretty good. The third was okay and the fourth is was okay. The first and second I felt were just absolutely amazing. The eyelash like I hear that. Audible wise, the first book I downloaded was What the Night Knows by Dean Koontz. Obviously this video is about Dean Koontz. The last time I heard an audiobook was probably when I was much younger and it was Harry Potter. At first I thought, this is very weird, kind of sounds like weird robotic. Once I got past that and I got into the story and stuff, the voice just becomes normal, just at the initial start. Something I do find a little bit difficult is when you finish a book and then at the back of it start another. Switching off the voice is a bit, it's, it's, a, it's a change and it, it, it takes me a wee bit to get into that person's voice as well. So the first audiobook I listened to was What the Night Knows. Spoilers! So I do believe that the main guy is a cop and he's got a wife and a son and a daughter. The cop killed a serial killer called Blackwood. I can't remember if Blackwood killed his mum or his sister. I think it might have been his sister and he ended up killing him. In this house and there's this mirror. I don't know how to really describe it. Basically there's another world in the mirror. There is this fairy kind of creature who talks to the little girl and convinces her how life could be magic and how she could have this and just all these fake promises and all lies. Or is it a painting? I don't know but the wife does a painting as well. The painting moves and it's a bit creepy. It's actually the spirit, the ghost or whatever of Blackwood trying to get this detective's kids. I absolutely like the main cop, the character. He's really nice. Oh my god. Okay, okay. The second book I read, which was actually my mum's first book by Dean Koontz that she read, this one is stuck in her mind. She loves that book and I understand why. The book was absolutely insane and loved it. Oh, it's so good. The second audiobook by Dean Koontz that I listened to was The Fun House. Oh, that was genuinely, I'm not even gonna be able to tell you how great it is. So there's a carnival. It's carnival people. Bob's around, a brother and sister go to the carnival, as you would, because it's carnival, who doesn't want to go? The main guy of the carnival, you know, the head, who's a horrible man. This man is in search of a certain person that ran away from him. She actually at first ran away with him to the carnival and then they ended up having a baby. This baby came out formed. She's seen this child as, you know, a sin, the devil. So she ran away from the carnival and left the baby with 
a carnival man. This guy hops and hops and hops and this whole time through his life he's looking for this woman, just looking for this woman. I'm pretty sure the woman changed her name. She went into hiding basically. She has a son and a daughter. Her mum's very stay away from boys, you're not allowed to be touched, you're not allowed to do this. Very strict in that sense. And one of the things the mum is adamant about is that she not get pregnant. So the girl ends up falling pregnant. She's stuck because who her mum is, what her mum says. Her mum is, is vicious. She's verbally abusive to the kids. More so the girl who happens to be called Amy. The mum herself obviously is a woman so it's a girl. So. so she falls pregnant and she has this dilemma of like what do I do? Do I tell my mum? Because if I tell my mum she's gonna kill me but I need help. She goes to the carnival with her brother. The carnival man, he somehow recognises or figures out that like Amy and the brother are, are the woman's kids that he's trying to find. So the mum's basically an alcoholic. The carnival man intrigues the boy, I mean the boy's younger. He tells the boy to come back later and I'll show you around, you know, when the carnival's closed. While this is all going on, there is a few murders that happen and the carnival man has to clean them up. And it turns out that his son, who you think is a gunther, he's got, even though he's an adult, he doesn't act like an adult, he doesn't think like an adult, he's very impulsive, he doesn't think about the consequences of his actions. He's going around killing people while the carnival moves around and his dad is having to clean up behind him. I am so bad explaining books. I I thought that book was incredibly exciting, pulled me in, I want to know more. I would say that is definitely one of my top three favourite books by Dean Koontz. After that, the next one I read was The House of Thunder. This woman wakes up in a hospital, she's been in a car accident I believe, she doesn't recognise anyone, everything's blank. When she was in college she was dating a Jewish guy and these arsehole frat boys they beat him up and then they ended up killing him. He didn't kill her because she got away. She went to court, got them all, you know, convicted of murder. And basically it's about these four guys getting back at this woman. That one was quite good. What I liked about it was these doctors in the hospital come in. This woman's like, they're the guys from college. So the book goes between, is it these, is it really these guys? Is it not? It turns out that it is the guys and they've all collabed to wreck her, destroy her and ruin her life. The Face of Fear, that one was next. Also incredible, utterly exciting and incredible. That is about, there's a guy who was meant to murder. He had a, a really bad accident. He's terrified of climbing. But he also happens to be psychic, which you know, it seems like a total random like thing. He's kind of trying to pinpoint a serial killer. He's really in love with this woman. He goes to her building where she's working and basically this serial killer is in the building. He's coming after them and it's so exciting. It's just about running about this building and it gets to the point where the only thing that they could do is climb out the window with the ropes and stuff. He's having an absolute meltdown because that's, his, that's the thing he fears the most. Honestly, it's a very, very, very good book. After that, Oh my, right, Shadow Fires. Holy crap, that is one of my ultimate favorite books ever. This woman is a divorce from her abusive, nasty, controlling ex-husband. They're at court and the husband actually gets hit by a car and dies. She didn't want him dead, she just, you know, wanted to get away from him. And then she sees him, he starts following her. At first, you know, she's like, she's, I'm going crazy, he's dead. So it turns out this guy, I'm pretty sure the guy's name is Eric. So this guy was pretty much like a genius, a scientist. He experimented on animals. He was experimenting on himself. So he actually did die, but he came back from the dead. As it goes on, he becomes less human and more angry and uncontrollable and vicious. And he's he's trying to get the ex-wife. My descriptions are really bad, but oh my God, I swear that book is fantastic. So the one after that I read was Whispers. This was quite a good one as well. Seems to be a lot of cop stuff. Basically, this woman is attacked and she sees the man, she identifies him. He is a well-known rich man. The cop's like, nah, it can't be him. This guy Bruno was in this town miles away. It wasn't him. She kills 
him. When the cops don't believe her, he didn't attack her in the first place and of course a dead man didn't attack her again. She decides I'm going to investigate, I'm going to deal with it because no one's going to help me. This one, trigger warning and stuff, it turns out that uh, there is two, so they're twins. Everybody thought there was only one but there was actually two of them. Only one ever went out at a time. Boys were told that they were devils, they were from hell, they have to stay away from women, they're not allowed to have sex, like they're absolutely disgusting. The mum of the boys was abused by her own father. He got his daughter pregnant. She hid her pregnancy. She said that her friend was having a baby. She was going to adopt her friend's baby. She ended up having twins. That is why she treated them as one person. Guy trying to get revenge. He hated his mum and he's seen his mum and certain women. Believed that his mum was going into other women's bodies. The one I just finished two days ago was called Dark fall. Now, this is a cop again. Got a daughter and a son. These little creatures come into the house, try and attack. They destroy everything in her locker. So she has like a clarinet and things, and that's all broken. And she's terrified, but she doesn't want to tell her dad because she's trying to be grown up. It turns out that it was voodoo. A lot of the time they were called like goblins, but they were just really weird creatures. He did bad things with powers. Um, and there's actually another guy who is also into voodoo, but he's like the good guy. These bodies turn up, they think it's a gang. The guy was killed in a locked room. There's no way anybody can be in or out. The killer actually calls them. He warns them it's voodoo and he better stay away. Basically, this bad voodoo guy cannot stand up against the cop because he's a righteous man. He's like, I need to get him off my back, off my key. His way of doing it is to kill his children. I quite enjoyed that. That was quite a short one though. So strangers also... That was strangers from different parts in America and they had weird dreams and obsessions and things like off the moon and it basically each individual kind of picked up on things and they went to a place and then they ended up all coming together and realising like we're all connected what the hell is like going on. There was aliens and the uh, military were you know wiped their memory. I don't know if it was like the DNA of the aliens or if like the aliens passed on their powers and um, these people had different powers. They all teamed up to get into the secure facility. So that was good. I quite like that one as well. This one here, um, The Vision. I apparently listened to this but I, I genuinely can't remember it. Most current book that I've just started is TikTok and I'm like two hours in. I'm not gonna lie, it's not my favourite. I'm kind of like Right, okay. Well, my mum said it was a really, really good book. She really liked it. So I could give an update on that one later. The, the books that I actually read was 77 Shadow Street, which was okay. That was about apartment building. It's about the neighbours. Weird stuff started happening. Yeah, it turns out that basically this lot that was actually switching between times. It wasn't really my favourite. I wasn't that keen on the character. There's no character that I absolutely loved. But it was okay. I mean, it's an okay read. Now I'm going to rate the books. What the Night Knows. I'd probably give that... Oh, what would I give that? I would give that a three. I think that would be three stars. It was intriguing. It was good. I did enjoy it. Eat the Fun House is a big fat five. The Fun House, an absolutely amazing, credible book. If it sounds like your type of thing, go read it. I swear you will love it. The House of Thunder. I would put that at a two, which I know is low, but the reason for that is because as much as I like going back and forth, back and forth, was she insane or is she not? It seemed to drag a little bit and then the ending was just kind of meh. The Face of Fear, a four, definitely a four. That was absolutely incredible book. Very exciting. Characters were great. That's definitely a four. Shadowfires, oh my god, another five. Hundred million percent a five. I, I think I might have liked Shadowfires more than the fun. Whispers with the twin boys. Um, I'd, I'd say a three. Dark Fall was very short, but I'd probably, I'd probably give that a three. I don't think I'd get a, give it a four, just purely because I didn't get blown away and amazed by it, but the characters were really cool. The concept was kind of cool. Strangers, I did really enjoy that. The first half, I had no idea what was going on, but when they all came together, banded together as a, like a group of survivors and they stood up, I think I'd actually give that a four because I would happily read that one again. It was it was good. 77 Shadow Street would be a two. I didn't really particularly 
care or love any of the characters in the book. Honestly, I don't think I'd read it again. I know the story. And the Frankenstein series. Oh, I think number one would definitely be five. Number two would be four. Three would be a three and four would be a three I think as well and um, the first two are definitely the best out of that series oh my god god why did I sound like Chewbacca again if you watched this video thank you if you watched my previous video thank you very much I'll see you in the next one whenever that will be bye